You know, my first reaction to these games were pretty negative. I didn't have a lot of good things to say about these games, but after the Pokemon presentation, I'm fully on board with not only Pokemon Shining Pearl and Brilliant Diamond, but also, surprisingly, Pokemon Legends. Which that game is the real shocker for me. Hey guys, it's Rob here and welcome back to the RoboChan Show where we cover the latest gaming news, leaks, and rumors from Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo in 2020 and beyond. If you want to be kept up on the latest gaming news, make sure you click that red subscribe button below this video and that notification bell so you know when I upload. And if you're interested, I have a Patreon, which link to that will be in the pinned comment along with my Twitter account. In this video, we are going to break down each trailer for Pokemon Legends and the Pokemon Diamond Pearl remakes, pick out all the new stuff and things that look really interesting to me or other people. I'll also be giving my overall thoughts on it as someone who wasn't fully on board with these games initially. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, it helps you to push this video to more viewers, and if not, smash that dislike button and tell me what you didn't like about the video in the comment section. And if you want to help me reach my goal of 700 followers on Twitter, you can follow me at RubbleRob93. Without further delay, let's get to the video. So let's not waste any time here guys, let's start with the Pokemon remakes. The very first thing I noticed with the difference between 5 months ago of what was shown and what was shown just a couple days ago at the time of writing the script was the color. The color has dramatically changed. Now you may be thinking that that doesn't really change too much, but it actually changed a lot of how it looks, especially the details in the environment. Initially it was this harsh and vibrant color with the backgrounds and environments and some of the character models. But with this new trailer, it's more of a softer, lighter tone, more akin to say Pokemon Let's Go, or pretty much any Pokemon game, I've noticed that a lot of Pokemon games like to have these lighter tones. Now this has made some of the details in the background less noticeable, as seen with these rocks right here during the battle sequences. Now I'm not too sure if this was just done for aesthetic, or they just want you to focus on the characters themselves, but it's hardly noticeable unless you're directly looking for it. But it is clear that the palette has changed, and I think in some spots it's for the better, and in some spots it's not. Now looks aside, the gameplay features are what really got me on board with this game. The first one that looked really fun is the Grand Underground. They've revamped it from the original game and it looks really fun. They have different mini games, you can have your own base, and what I think is the best part of the Grand Underground is the Pokemon Hideaways. Now fun fact here, this is all new to this game. It wasn't even featured in the original Pokemon Diamond and Pearl game back on the DS. Now one thing that's really cool about these Pokemon Hideaways is that depending on what statues you put in your secret base depends on what kind of Pokemon you find in the Pokemon Hideaways. In my opinion, this adds adds a level of exploration and replayability aside from the main game that I think is a nice addition to these games. I think this could also lead the way for them to adding more Pokemon later down the line as well. Second is something that is actually kind of cool and I completely missed it while watching the Pokemon Direct. You can customize the effect of the Pokeballs when you release them in battle. Now apparently according to my friend this was in the original game as well but I completely forgot about it. I think that's a pretty cool detail and something that I'm definitely going to be exploring once I play this game. Now along with those secret Pokemon on hideaways, there's also more features that are new to this game, and that's customizable clothes. Now unfortunately, what I notice is that you can't customize parts of your clothes, you can only have an overall outfit. So you won't be able to mismatch, say, the winter style with the Eevee jacket style, which is kind of a bummer, but at least there is some kind of customization in this game. The next thing they showed off is dancing, and I swear, every single time I played this in Pokemon Diamond or Pearl, I sucked at it. Let's hope I'm better in this version. But as you can see, this is a huge upgrade over the DS version of these games for obvious reasons. The Union Room also makes a return. I remember using this once in a while, but I never really did a full dive into it. I'm more of a main portion of the game kind of player. I'm not really into the PvP aspect of Pokemon. Another great feature in these remakes is Pokemon being able to travel outside the Pokeball. I always loved this kind of thing in Pokemon games that they've been doing with the recent Pokemon games. It's always cool to see your Pokemon follow you outside the Pokeball. I don't know what it is, but it's something that I always love in these games. Now we also do have a new version of the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is the Dialga and Palkia edition, which I will definitely be getting if I can. I've been meaning to get a second Switch honestly, and this is the perfect chance. Though I gotta be honest, I wish the color scheme was a bit different, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys. Now they didn't just show off these Pokemon remakes, they also showed off what was the main attraction for me for this Pokemon Direct, and that's the Pokemon Legends game. Right off the bat, the first thing I noticed is the character animations were drastically improved with a lot of the character models, though as you can see, 
see with Celine, some of the textures on the hair were still a bit rough and especially the clothes as well. But before this trailer, the character models were obviously not finished and were rough around the edges. You can tell from the old footage that the gameplay had some frame rate problems as well here and there. But now in the new trailer, there is a drastic improvement. With that being said, let's all be honest here, some of the textures in the game aren't super detailed. But it is an improvement over five months ago. And I do have to say that some of these shots do look really great, especially the nighttime shots. But what about gameplay? Because graphics are important, yeah, but I think gameplay is a lot better and more important in my opinion. There is a reason why we still enjoy these retro games and even older Pokemon games. Well, the gameplay actually looks really fun. Now, interesting fact about the region this time around that we're going to be exploring and going through is a pre sinnoh region. I just think it's pretty cool that we're going to be able to see what the region was like before it became the Sinnoh region. And how this plays into the story of Pokemon Legends is essentially you're hired as part of a group called the Survey Corps. Your job is to hunt Pokemon and collect data. Similar to how in the future when this place becomes the Sinnoh region, you collect Pokemon data for any Professor Oak or whatever professor it is, depending on which Pokemon game you're playing. Think of being part of this group as a pre-Pokemon trainer job. Now, interestingly enough, it seems that instead of buying Pokeballs from the Pokemart, we're going to be crafting our own Pokeballs, which is actually very interesting because what the heck is a Master Ball made out of? That's basically the highest form of Pokeball you can make, and it can catch any Pokemon, so what the heck is it made out of? Now, another thing that's different from your usual Pokemon game is that you can die or black out, as they say, but essentially you can die in this game. It's a weird change to the Pokemon formula where they can actually attack you now, but I think it's something that's welcomed and something different. And to add to that gameplay of that danger of being attacked by Pokemon, there is a stealth element where you can hide in tall grass. I think this is a pretty cool change because usually all you have to do is either go up to the Pokemon if it's like a special Pokemon or a legendary Pokemon, or you just find them in tall grass. You're never really sneaking up on Pokemon, you just encounter Pokemon in grass usually. Now Game Freak has gone even further than that and made not every Pokemon hostile, like the Bidoof in the trailer, I'm pretty sure that's Bidoof anyways. Some will actually run away as well, so you have to be careful on which Pokemon you approach and how you want to approach it. Now, if you don't want to be stealthy or you don't want to be friendly, you can always battle the Pokemon like you usually do in Pokemon. All you simply have to do is throw a Pokeball that already contains one of your Pokemon. And then the battle commences, and this is where I think the game takes a sharp turn from your usual Pokemon formula. The cool thing about this battle system right off the bat is that speed stats matter. The faster the Pokemon moves, the more moves you can use in a row, and this also depends on what moves it knows as well. There is also two styles styles of moves which can change the flow of battle. There is a strong style which will decrease the Pokemon's speed, but this ends up affecting how many attacks you can use in a row as well, and in return you can shave off more health from a Pokemon. This is probably great for when you're grinding your levels and trying to make your Pokemon more powerful if you want to finish them off really quick. The Agile style does the complete opposite and lets you attack more but have less damage. I think the Agile style would be good for healing or maybe status effects. That way you're not looking to damage them but put a status effect or heal your Pokemon. Now, one question I do have for the devs of this game, and they're not gonna <laughs> they're not gonna see this video at all, but it's something that I've been wondering in my mind. If you use a status effect move as a strong move, does that move have a better chance to have a status effect or a stronger status effect like poison on that Pokemon? Or if you say use a status effect move that causes poison, does it take more health per turn? There's a lot of questions I have about this, and I think that I'm only gonna find out when the game comes out. I don't think we're gonna find out in a trailer. Now we do have new Pokemon here with whole new backstories, but the ones that I really want to focus on is this one. This one has a very dark backstory, and just listen to it. It's, it's pretty dark when you think about it. It's made up of the Pokemon that have died. Like, that's that's a little dark. Have you noticed that a lot of these descriptions for some of these Pokemon are pretty dark, like a uh, Cubone. Cubone's description is really sad and really depressing. Now, no one say anything about this in the comment section. I want other people to go out and find it themselves, but just put the word Cubone in the comment section with a sad emoji or a sad face. Anyways, depressing descriptions of Pokemon aside, I think these games look overall great now. I had my problems with them at first, but over Overall, I'm on board now, but don't get me wrong, I do still have some problems with the games, especially the Pokemon remakes with the character models. I still think something akin to Link's Awakening would have been better, but it is growing on me. But those are really just my thoughts on this and the breakdown of all the stuff that happened during the Pokemon Presents. Now, I didn't cover the mobile stuff because I'm not really too interested in that, but if you want me to cover it, I will. Just make sure you guys tell me in the comment section below if you do want me to cover that stuff. And also, while you're down there, make sure you tell me if you guys are on board with these games. Did these 
trailers change your mind like they did me or are you still off board or maybe you were still on board from that first reveal? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe to Robo Rob Gaming for more gaming news, breakdowns, and reviews and leaks and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching guys and remember stay safe, stay charged, and have a good one.